Hello everyone. Today we're going to explore a concept from Writing Analytically by David Rosenwasser and Jill Stephen. The topic we'll be explaining is called Seems Like It Could Be About X, but could be really is about Y. What does that mean, you ask? This concept is really a method of analysis. When you feel like you've done a decent reading of the passage you need to write about, but it still lacks depth, you need a way to create a more sophisticated meaning. By determining the x in the equation, you eliminate all the obvious or cliché answers, leaving only gold nuggets of deep analysis, the y. This is what you build your real argument or point off of. If we arrange this method into an equation, it goes, it could be x, your initial thoughts, reactions, etc., but it is really about y, your more sophisticated analysis with the incorporation of context and other information. It's important to note that you can do this formula multiple times, each digging a little deeper into the passage you are working on. This method is ideally used in the invention stage of your writing, when you're drafting and trying to develop ideas. However, it's also useful for revision if you feel like your analysis is missing something. To see how we can really use this method, let's take a look at a quote from The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. The passage reads, But above the gray land and the spasms of bleak dust which drift endlessly over it, you perceive, after a moment, the eyes of Dr. T. J. Eckelberg. First, we can find some subjects of the passage, the land and the eyes of Dr. T. J. Eckelberg. Now, let's find some key terms that can help us interpret the passage, like gray, spasms, and bleak. Clearly, this passage isn't painting a very pretty picture. Therefore, we could say that the point of this passage is to describe the rundown landscape. But let's try putting this short passage more in context with the novel as a whole. What are some major themes in the novel that could relate to this passage? Love? Probably not. Memory? Eh, maybe. Societal pressures? That sounds promising. When put into context, we can see that this short passage is not only describing the literal landscape, but can relate to a broader theme in context with the rest of the novel. So, this passage could also be about how society is always watching. Look at that. By spending a little more time on this passage to fill in our formula, we have drawn out a deeper analysis. For our second example, let's examine one of the very last passages of that same book. It reads, Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. Let's look at that passage again and try to analyze it. First, let's highlight important terms, green light and future. These seem like key points of this phrase, so at first glance it might seem to be about how the green light represents Gatsby's future, and the future in general. Is that what the green light really represents, though? Let's go back to the passage and analyze it again. Taking into account the rest of the book, what else could the green light be a symbol of? Hope. So even though it seemed like X, it was really about Y. Once we went back and looked at what else the passage might be about, we found a deeper meaning, one that might provide a better base for an essay. So why would you use this technique? Well, as you could see, we were really able to get to the core of meaning behind the text and to truly engage with the story. If you are having trouble getting beyond a more basic understanding of something, try it out. It could be useful, but really is extremely beneficial when analyzing text. 